Hello and welcome to today's supposed live stream. So I wanted to show up for all of you who have signed up to our five day painting wow challenge. I'm extremely excited because I'm going to be going through how exactly you're going to be painting this. And typically during a challenge, it will be day one, one painting, day two, one painting. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to give you the opportunity to build your own composition on the paper where we will be learning five different ways to fill up the page. And each of these wildflowers are designed in a way where I want to teach you a specific skill. So each day, we're actually building up specific watercolor techniques to help you to gain confidence so that by the end of day five, you actually have built up different techniques that's going to help you to shape your watercolor journey. Now, if you are participating in this five-day challenge, I am extremely excited to welcome you. I'm also extremely excited because the energy in the Facebook group has been growing and, you know, it's so nice to be able to connect with people. It's very different connecting, you know, on Instagram and on YouTube. And sometimes I don't actually get to connect where I get to see your art and so on. So thank you so much for participating in this five-day Painting Wild Challenge. And this is actually the first challenge where I'm actually hosting it on a Facebook group. So one of the things that I wanted to do, because today is day one, is I really, really wanted to get on, show up for you, and also do a live painting session where I will be painting a wildflower that some of you have mentioned in the Facebook group that you really, really like. So I actually created a poll to ask what are some of your favorite wildflowers, and a couple of them were wildflowers that I really like as well. And we all voted and we decided that wild poppies was what we were going to be painting today. So I'm going to be going through with you my start to finish process. It's not going to be edited at all. So this is going to be all in real time. You're going to see how I actually paint from start to finish. At the same time, I also want to have you listen to how exactly I'm planning my painting as I'm going along. Now, I want to remind you that as you are going through this painting process and as you are painting along with me, one of the things that is very, very, very crucial and important is that our paintings are going to turn out different. And it's not different because you and I have different skills or knowledge. Yes, that's one factor. And another factor is that we are all showing up in a different way. We all come with different mindsets, different perspectives about painting. Our eyes also see a reference photo in a different way. So I want to remind you that if your painting turns out different, it's yours, it's unique. I want you to take away whatever lessons that you can get out of it that is uniquely yours. I would recommend you to pull out a small notebook jot down learning points because that's going to be things that you might be able to put into your practice at a much later stage as you're growing with your watercolor practice. Now, everyone who is turning up live today, I am really, really excited to bring you through it. But I also feel like going in with a mindset that is open, curious, is going to help you to benefit this particular tutorial better. And with every tutorial that you learn on YouTube, I think that it's so important for us to go in with a mindset where you really, really want to learn. And that even if it's something that you know already or that you're familiar with, it's still so important to put on the cap where you're curious and you want to be open to hearing how others see this perspective or see this reference photo. So without further ado, if you're not signed up for the five-day challenge, I would highly encourage you to because there's so many, many nuggets in there. And this is a great way for you to learn from me as well. It's going to be a little bit different from all the YouTube videos because they're sped out and most of this are all in real time. So I would really encourage you to. I am going to be turning the camera down so that you can see my setup and we're going to dive in. So let's go. So this is the part where it gets a little messy and you're going to see me turn everything down to my setup. 
so that you can see exactly what I have. Let me remove away my camera wire. And, you know, so I wanted to do this as a live stream on YouTube. I was really excited because it was going to be my first YouTube live. And it was something that I was looking forward to. Also a little nervous because, you know, it being my first time. And of course, it being my first time, there's always going to be lessons to be learned. And one of the lessons that I learned was that, well, I had to get approval and I didn't have the approval for it. So I couldn't do it live. And me wanting to still show up for you guys, I wanted to really make sure that I've got everything um, covered and things like that. I still decided to go on live. So let me just figure out my wire and give me a second so that we can get this done. So now... I've got my reference photo right here. And since we are going to be painting Icelandic poppies or wild poppies, I am using the flower color guide as my reference. And I've been looking through to look for poppies. And these were the shapes that I'm very drawn to. So whenever I select a reference photo, I always think about the shape and which flower exactly that I like, that I want to capture. Now, everyone has got different preferences when it comes to whatever flowers that you like and, you know, in terms of colors, shapes and so on. So another one that I really liked was this one. So we're going to do a mixture of both because I really like the color here and I really like the shapes here. So we're going to do a mixture of both. Now I put a bookmark here so that I can refer on to it. Let me share with you my setup right now here. So I've got my 100% cotton paper and this paper is from Baohong. It is in a block, so I can do a lot of wet work, but we're not going to do so much wet work today. We're going to do a dry and wet technique. The next thing I have is my palette of paints from Sunailie. I'm just going to spray it down. So earlier I had sprayed it down, but I can see that it has dried up. I really want to mist my paints so that my paints get activated. I want to remind you that if you are using a wet brush to go into your dry palette, it's not going to give you the same level of vibrance in your painting. So if you find that your paints are not vibrant, maybe you need to pre-wet your paints a little more because that's going to help you to really get the color from the paints. Now, the next thing I want to show you are the brushes that I'll be using. So one of the things that I really like to do is I really love using flat brushes. And I know that many of us are used to using a round brush. So I want you to just use whatever you have in your toolkit. Just keeping in mind that because our brush shapes are different, you are going to achieve different kinds of flower shapes, which is also another reason why our flowers are going to turn out different. So the other thing that I have is my two cups of water here and my paper towel, which is going to help me to absorb all of the excess water. So now we are actually ready to start painting. So I want to take you through my start to finish process. So I've got my mixing palette here, and this is going to be where I want you to pay attention to my paint is to water ratio and consistency. Now, this is the question that many of you had on the Facebook group. You were asking, how would I know what my paint and water ratio and consistency is, I want you to pay attention to how runny my paint is. That's going to give you an idea because water is collecting in many different spots when we're painting. It collects on our paper, it collects in our palette, and, it, and it's also in our cup. And also, we don't see it, but it's in our brush, right? Because our brushes basically pull in and absorb all of that water. And sometimes our paper towel is also wet, and therefore, there's also water. So I want you to pay attention to where exactly your water spots are in your space because that's going to help you to paint in a way where if you don't want it to be too wet, then you got to pay attention to is my brush too wet? Is my paper too wet? Is my palette too wet? Or is my paper towel too wet? So I know I was speaking really fast right there. So let me just slow down and let's get into the painting. So let me first start off by pulling my flat brush. So I'm going to be using a Princeton Velvet Touch half inch stroke brush. And you know, I really wish that this was a live stream so that you could ask questions. But you know, since I'm uploading this to YouTube, you can ask questions in the comments. Please do that, you know, ask me questions get curious about things and you're definitely welcome to 
go ahead and make comments. And we've also got the Facebook group where we can engage. And the first thing I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be pulling out my color. I've got vermilion hue from Holbein together with some yellow light from Snailier. And I'm trying to create this nice yellowy look. At the same time, I too want to create it such that it's a little bit corally. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my neon paints as well, which I really love. These neon paints are from Kiss Ho. And I use them a lot. And what I notice about them though, they are not really very transparent. They are a little bit more towards the opaque side. So when I mix them with my watercolors, I get this semi-transparent kind of look. So now you can see my paint is the water ratio and my consistency. And I'm going to go in to paint my poppies. Now, whenever we see a reference photo, the first thing I want you to think about and start with is I want you to think about the entire outside shape of the flower. We'll start with that. And then following which, we're going to start to add detail. So we're going to start with our first transparent layer. When we paint, we paint from light to dark. And that's the typical principle when we are painting flowers, when we are painting anything actually, landscapes and so on. Because watercolor is a medium where you can't really put on white later on. You can, you can use gouache, but reserving the whites are so important. So the planning really is important. And I think that sometimes when you watch people paint really fast, you miss the point that planning is actually part of this entire process. So speaking of planning, now because my poppies have a nice yellow center and I want to make sure that I want that center, I'm going to start off with my yellows. I'm going to start with my yellow center first. And I'm going to use my small round brush for this because I don't want it to be really bloppy. I'm choosing my brush where I want to make sure that this is not going to have too much water. I want the lines to be fine. So these are things that you want to think about when you're selecting your brush, right? It's not that you're selecting it because the details are small, but because a small brush also captures less water. And this is going to help you to then be able to control the amount of water on your paper. Okay, so we let's go in and paint some of those details. So I'm going to start by painting my poppies and I'm just going to go in and kind of dot. I'm going to dot all around, creating this really small depth mark. Now, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, but I'm using here a silver black velvet size 6 and this is a mixed synthetic hairbrush. And I'm just pulling these small little strokes all around, basically creating that stamen, right? And it's not really exact. I'm leaving out white spaces. And the white spaces, as I said, is me reserving the light in the painting. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. So I've got one over here, and I want to create one over here. I really like this one because it's got such nice folded petals and that's such a good opportunity for us to play around with the shapes and the difference. So I'm gonna do the same where I am pulling it. And after I'm done with that, I'm going to create one over here as well, just for cohesiveness so I'm just going to and the re then now the thing is you might be wondering why is it that I'm starting with the inside of the flower now usually there is a certain strategy involved and I'm going to share with you why now I'm starting with the inside of the flower because it's yellow it has the lightest tint strength and if I were to have my reds really 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 big over here and I don't plan well enough, I'm going to overlap with the areas that might be yellow. And what happens is that I don't have the space for the yellows and watercolor being transparent. If I were to layer the yellows over my orange, it's going to get lost in that painting. So I'm starting with the color with the lightest tint strength first so that I can better 
plan my painting. Okay, so now I've got my two yellows there. We're going to go in with a big brush and I love big brushes. Now this paper is actually a size A4 size paper and usually I like to paint even bigger where I paint A3 size but it means that you're going to be even further away from my camera and that's going to be really hard for you to see and you can see I'm starting off with a really really light wash of pink and I'm just going to start creating some of those giant petals that I see. Okay and I'm just going to swish my brush around and there's some areas that I've added in more color and you might find that it's very very faint in the camera and that's fine because I'm going to be adding in more color as I go along and what I'm doing right now is really a dry in wet technique. I'm leaving in gaps so I'm not really painting the entire part of the flower. You can see I'm basically using the corner of my flat brush to kind of tap tap in and you get to pull some of those parts in and the flower is so fluffy I want to capture all of that fluffiness so I'm just going to pull it in and kind of leave some parts out as well so I'm going to go in while some areas are still wet and take the opportunity to add some beautiful layers where there's bleeds and blends so this is me kind of pulling in some areas so that I get a variation of color. I can play around with where I want my shadows to be. So when you're going in with this additional color, what you're doing is you're painting the shadows. I'm being very mindful that I don't want my brush to be too wet because I don't want any blobs to be taking place. I'm also using the tip of my brush to get finer lines if I can. I'm noticing that in spaces where my brush is basically very, very wet, it gets very bloppy and I don't want that. So if you don't want that, dry your brush, pay attention to the watermarks. Areas that are already dry are creating hard lines in my painting. Okay, like this is an example of a hard line where it's not blending in. That's because it's dry and that's okay. So I'm leaving it to be really, really loose. And I want this flower to look like there is a lot of light in the middle, which is why I'm leaving all of those white spots. So you can go closer to the yellow if you like and add some of that shadow in. And you see that I've actually not changed up the color so much. I'm basically using close to the same color. And I like going in and kind of adding in some depth in the middle where it's slightly darker in pink. And when you do that, you are giving the illusion that that is where all the shadows are. And we're painting the shadows. A painting loosely is not just painting the petals, you're actually painting the shadows as well. So I'm quite happy with where this is. I've got a mixture of very loose blended colors and I've also got a mixture of harder lines and this is the basically the effect that I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm not going to overdo it. I'm going to leave that as my first poppy right there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try out painting this one. I'm going in with my big brush again. And I really love, love big brushes because this is going to help you to capture big shapes. When you paint loosely, you get a small brush. You tend to hold it tighter. You get smaller strokes and everything gets tighter. So if you want big, loose paintings, I would highly recommend you to paint using bigger brushes. So I'm going to go in here. And the color that I have right now, I mix my pinks with a little bit of this June Brilliant from Holbein. So it's a slight variation in color. And I'm also adding in a bit of orange. So I've got a difference. So let's see, let's start with here. 
And I basically wriggled my brush and I'm going towards the center. And this created my first giant petal. And I want to have these two big petals as the ones that are in a darker shade. This is such a lovely coral color. I'm going to be washing off my paint and basically getting a lighter value, dabbing the excess on my paper towel. And you can see I'm really just taking my time. Just go in and I'm going to go in now and add in petals. And as I'm adding in petals, you know, the color is diffusing. And I'm noticing that it's pretty close to that flower there. That's fine. I'm just going to be aware of it. And we're going to kind of play around with the proportions and the shapes. And I want one of those petals here. And when I'm doing this petal here, I'm also lifting some of the paint. So can you see when I push it, I'm basically pushing the water into this very part here. And then I'm pulling some of the excess paint that I pulled out here, out to here. So this is me really painting slowly and intentionally. And I believe that if you do this more, it's going to help to develop your muscle memory. And that's so important when we are painting. Sometimes we watch videos and they're all sped up. And I know that people don't have the time to watch a one hour video and even for me, most of my YouTube videos, when I edit it, it's also because I actually take about two to three hours to finish a painting. And it's unrealistic for someone to follow that for two to three hours. So I totally get it. But it gives you this illusion that things have to move fast and you have to go, go, go. But really, when you do it slowly, you're developing your muscle memory. And I want to encourage you to do that more. Okay. Okay. So while this area is still wet, I'm going to add in some areas where I believe are shadows. There, I've got one shadow there. And you can see I keep going back to the same mixture. And there's one shadow here also, almost like a petal that's peeking out there. Then I'm going to go a little darker and I'm going to pull it here. So whenever I'm charging, which is adding more paint to my wet area, make sure that your brush is not too wet so you avoid blooms. You're going to get blooms if you've got wet paint. And I'm just pulling out that paint so that it moves upwards. Now here is already dry. And I am going to kind of draw around it almost like I want a petal to be there. So I'm going to soften this part here and blend it out. And how I softened it was, after I dropped in paint, which you saw me do, I wash off my brush, which I'm doing right now, dab that excess down, and I just want a damp brush to just pull and soften that part. Now, if you're watching this, please comment and tell me how this was like for you so that I can understand where exactly you struggle or where exactly was a light bulb moment for you. And I want to celebrate all of this with you. I really want you to paint along. I hope you're not just watching this because my belief is that you can watch this, but it's going to be when you actually do the painting that you get real wins, you know. When you're just watching, it's going to be great for knowledge and capturing technical information. But watercolor is something where you really have to practice and do the work so that you can actually experience how it feels like when it's on your paper. So because the flower, I want to capture it to be underneath this existing flower, I am going to paint a contrast here almost as though it is underneath and I'm just moving my small brush around, jaggeding around it. And the lines being so hard, I'm going to soften it by pulling that paint down.
And if you find that it's really wet, dry your brush and use your brush to mop it up. And don't go over it too much because that's where you run the risk of overworking. And that was also a question that I saw in the Facebook group. Overworking, it's so real. I still overwork my painting sometimes. And having the knowledge of what results in overworking is so important so that you would be more confident in creating the paintings that you want, right? Right. Now, I'm happy with where this is going with my copy here. So, I am going to just go on to my next copy and let the watercolor do the work for me. Let it blend, let it do the thing. Now, the next one is over here. And I can see that because I made my petals so big and blousy, they were all really, really big. Okay, now let's go into the next flower here. And I can see that it's kind of like, because my planning was not perfect, of course, I didn't expect my petals here to be so big. So I'm going to just go with the flow and, you know, figure out what and how I want to capture this. And I can see that because I created it in a semicircle shape, I basically wanted it to be facing this way. So I'm going to do that, just that. And I'm going to make it really light, this flower, so that it doesn't get so much attention because I don't want all my flowers to overshadow each other. So I'm starting with the base and I'm creating that bowl shape that I see. Then I'm going to go in with my smaller flat brush to get that deep in there. And it's going to be a little bit darker because it's in the shadows. I'm using the corner just to pull out some of that. And I'm going to also add some shadow. So you can see I'm not exactly painting the entire thing. There, and I'm going to also pull it in close to the yellows. Right. So I want to highlight the shadow in there. So I'm going to drop in some darker colors. So there's a contrast between that flower on the top and the flower on the side. And you can see just by adding in that contrast, these two flowers start to highlight and stand out. And I'm adding in a red. I really want to add in a little bit more neon colors to it because I really like my neon colors. Go with whatever color that fills you up when you're painting. Now, so many of us are obsessed about finding our style. And I think that innately, we already have it. And we are looking to other style as a guide. And I want you to just think about the colors that you already like and lean into, because that's already part of you building your style. And the colors that you are using to create this painting is another indication of what your style is like, right? So go into that. And when I look at the reference photo, I see that where the stamens are is often where the shadows are. So that's where I'm always adding my darker colors. So this is me being very intentional about how I'm showing you the way in which I'm painting so that you are also better at understanding where I'm coming from. I'm adding it these areas slightly darker than the bottom because I'm going to showcase that this bottom petal here is where all of that light is, while the ones on the top here is where all of that shadow is. Right. Now I'm quite happy with where this is going so far and I can see a variation. Let's go into the stems and that's the fun part. Now I'm going to pull out my favorite green here. It's called Chrome Oxide by Snellier. It's my favorite green. However, whenever we pull out greens, one of the things that we struggle with is how are we going to mix our greens to look more natural. And this is my secret sauce. It's basically to pick your flower mixture Whatever it is, if it's yellow, put in the yellow. If it's red, put in the red. If it's 
if it's blue, put in the blue and you can hear me saying I'm putting in basically the primary colors. So I'm gonna mix in some of my reds in there and straight away the colors get muddier. And I want that because I want it to be muted. And also it creates this illusion of color harmony. So I'm recycling the colors that I'm using on my palette and adding it in here. And when I add red, it's going to lean towards the warmer side because it's of a warmer temperature. And if I put in yellow, of course, it's also warmer. And if I put in blue, it's going to be different. And it depends on whether or not the blue that you're choosing is warm or cool. So I'm going to just pull my stems using my small size round brush, size 6. And I'm just going to pull it here. And I like that when I look at the reference photo, the stems are really curvy. They're not straight. So I'm going to keep that in mind. And I'm just going to pull it here. Right? There's one. And it has bled into my pink. And I don't want that. So what do I do if I don't want that? I'm going to wash off the blue, the green, sorry, from my brush and I'm going to lift. I'm going to lift and I'm going to dab that excess paint onto my paper. So right there and then I basically stop the green from moving further. Next, I'm going to pull more of my stems and now I want to do this guy so let's make it a little fun and let's make him go from here maybe going this way now and it's a little bit of a dry brush and I like to keep the effect going really close to where that petal is next I'm going to add some darker tones while I'm at it. So I'm basically changing up the color value. I'm not using a different green. Throughout, you see that I'm always using the same color. I just play around with the color value. Next, I'm going to do the stem over here. And I'm going to make him like this. So they're all curvy and moving around, very fun. Now let's create that nice little bud over here. And for us to do that, we're gonna start off by making our pink first. So I'm gonna pull my silver black velvet half inch stroke brush. I've used these brushes so much that the words are starting to fade out on my brush. These are really brushes that I love to use so much. So I'm just going to put in around here. So now I know that in the reference photo, the bud is lower than the top flower, but you're the artist and you can do anything and I'm gonna make it up here. I'm just gonna create a teardrop shape by pulling it down. Then while it's still wet, Gonna take that opportunity to add a little bit more color just to give it an uh, indication of some folds, some shadows. Let it bleed, let that softness happen on its own. Then I'm going to start working on its greens. So I've got the green here, a little bit of that pink mixture, and I'm going to then pull my stem. So I realized that I'm using my flat brush. I'm gonna change over to my round brush with this. And I like to use my round brush, my smaller round brush, because I feel like I get more control. I also feel like I can get thinner strokes easily when I do that. And one of the things that I know a big round brush can do for you is that you can get thin strokes as well but they hold so much water. So this is a tip on water control that I told you about, right? Because they hold so much water, it's so hard to not get blobs sometimes. So use a smaller brush, change your brushes as you're painting so that this gives you the opportunity to experience as much success as you can while you're painting. And I'm just going in here. It was a really light color and I let it blend. I added in that darker values pulling some of that color 
And you know, my brush has a little bit of pink in it. And now I've got a bit of pink in my stem and I'm really liking it. It was accident. And I'm going to add even more pink just on purpose because I think it was so fun to have that. Okay, it almost like got a glow in my stems with that pink. Okay, now let's move on to adding in those greens. Now, the thing is, my butt is slightly wet. The question you want to ask yourself is, do you want it to blend into your butt? If you want it to blend into your butt, go ahead and add the greens. If you don't, then you've got to wait for it to fully dry. Now, I don't really want it to blend into my pink because then it's going to look muddy. So I'm going to just wait a little, but I'm going to add in the spots where I can see it's dry. Okay, and I'm just going to add in one part here. And I'm going to wait for this to dry a little more before I add it in. I'm going to wait. Okay, so let's now start to layer. And I want to add a little bit of green, yellow in the center of my flowers. I've got a phalo green light here, which I'm mixing with my yellows. And this is going to be that green that you see in the middle of the poppies I'm using my small round brush to help me to create some of that green. You don't have to be really exact. I'm just drawing small lines and pulling it, some of it overlapping. I'm going in with a light consistency because I know that I can always layer on later. Paying attention to how much water you have on your brush, making sure that it's not too wet. Then I'm going to add a tinge of green in some of these spots as well because I do see that there is a little bit of green. And just on parts of the yellow, I'm just add it in. Very casually, not really not really focusing on the details exactly. Now, while the green is drying, I'm going to go in and add a bit of shadow in the yellows where I saw before. And here, I'm adding a bit of vermilion hue to my yellow so that I get a slightly darker yellow, almost like an orange. And I'm just going to dot all around. So this gives me a little bit more depth. And I'm layering this on while the painting has fully dried. This is basically dry and wet technique when I'm layering. And right now, as you're watching me do this, you can see that the center has started to pop. It has started to get depth on its own. Just because I'm adding in another layer of this darker paint. You can always go in with a yellow ochre as well because it's slightly warmer in tone and just add a couple of shadows in there. Some lines. Now I'm done layering the centers and what I want to do is I want to add a couple of layers around here because I feel like it's just a blank stroke. I'm going to use my big brush, swapping over to my big brush, and I'm just going to add a very thin layer. You see, I'm pulling out this very runny light color. And even though I'm doing that, and when I layer over, you can see that I've added a couple of strokes to give it depth. You can use your smaller brush as well to pull. And I'm going to add a bit darker tones just to pull. 
some of that color. Soften it out if you find that it's too stark. Adding in while it's still wet. Okay. Now, my question to you is, do you want to add more layers to the other flowers? Now, it's really up to you, but I'm just going to add a bit of neon color shade just on some of the tips over here where I feel like I want to add in a bit more depth. So I'm going to pull the neon color here that I have onto my palette, adding a bit of pink to it as well. More pink and pink. And then I'm just going to use my brush and roughly just dab it out. This creates a bit of uh, fun. I'm even pulling out some areas where I believe that it might be it might be more there petal that I want to pull out. And what I'm doing right now is negative painting where I'm painting around a specific area, almost pretending like there could be a petal there. It's one of my favorite techniques. Because I feel like you get to really get more depth in your painting. So I'm just drawing in some of these loose veins. I'm going to do the same with here. And maybe this time I'm going to add a bit of a lavender color just to make it more fun. So this now here is a slight purple. Let's see what happens actually. I'm just going to add a little bit of that purple here also. It's almost like a cool shadow. So I'm adding in some of those shadows. I'm painting the shadows right now. And I love um, taking my time as I'm painting, being very intentional about what exactly I want from this flower, from this painting. Going in with my neon colors and pulling out details. Playing around with my color values as well. So if I find that it's too stark, I can always soften it and pull. Use your brush to pull and create those marks that you want. Right, now I'm quite happy with where this is going. I wanted to really bring out the blue here where I've got that lavender. So I'm adding it more intentionally so that you can actually see that blue. And I can see that it's also really, really stuck. So I'm going to wash off my paint and pull it mix it around, almost like spreading it around. So it's going to be a slight glaze to the painting and that's okay. It's part of figuring out new styles and ways of doing things. Adding in some of that shadow on the top. Right, now let's go into this one, this guy here. I'm going to add in some of my neon colors here.
I'm coloring this entire part because I don't really want it to be white. There shouldn't be light in there because it's supposed to be part of the shadow. So I basically color in the entire spot. Tickling my small brush into my yellows to indicate that shadow part. Being very close and intentional to where exactly I want that shadows and lights to be. So you can see that because here it's very much darker that I've put down the colors. You can then see that this petal here stands out a lot more. Now, if I want to differentiate between these two, then I might have to add a little bit of darker contrast, maybe on this side here, where I'm outlining the shape and then blending it out. So you get some of that darker shadow there. You can see then the difference between the two, right? You can do this more also. You can see I'm just putting my brush in this jagged fashion. Pull it with your clean water so it blends out. Right. Quite happy with where this is going. I hope that you're having a wonderful time watching me paint, watching me create. It's been so fun getting to do this with you. I really wish that we could have done this live because I would have loved to chat and, you know, get to know you and all of that. But I also believe that you can use the chat box and talk to me so that we can get to know each other as well as, you know, some of the experiences that you might be going through as you are doing this together with me. Okay. Now, the key thing about painting loosely is not overdoing it. So this is where we really need to start to stop and not go on and on. I'm going to start to stop. And I'm going to add my last bit here, which is a little darker green in some spots of the stem. Especially where, you know, it touched the flowers so that we get a bit more depth. Blend out that hard line if you want with water. Use the water and let it do its magic. Blend it out. Blend it out. And here, I wanted to add a green petal while waiting for it to dry, right? So now we've got the opportunity because it has sort of dried. And I'm just going to add in that spot petal. Adding in darker colors, darker values, allowing that pink to peek through as well. That's fine. Almost like it's part of the feature of this. Then I'm going to pull using my small brush and pulling it down. Using my small brush here and capturing that shadow here from that base, bringing it up. Now I want to add a bit of detail, a little bit, just a little bit attached to my butt, just to indicate like, you know, there's something going on as well. It's not flat. Bring out some of that depth. I just added in a red line, basically. It's using my brush.
added in a little touch of that blue purple also. Right, now I think I'm done and I'm quite happy with where and how my painting looks. I would love to see how your painting turned out. And if you have got any questions at all during this entire process, please, please, please let me know in the comments. Let me bring up the painting close to the camera so you get to see exactly what we did today. Some of the things as a summary for what we started off with was I used a large flat brush to paint this and you are allowed to use a round brush or whatever brush that you have. But I will encourage you to use a large brush so that you get a lot more movement. Now, the flowers initially in the reference photos are separated and they are not stuck together. But as we are painting, I put them all together and I think that it worked out really well. Now, one of the things when we are painting is that we're not just painting the petals, we're also painting the shadows because when you paint the shadows, it differentiates between a top and a bottom petal. It also differentiates between the in-betweens and where exactly the petals are. So something for you to think about because this is actually related to negative painting, which I feel is such a game changer when I was starting to paint. And if you're keen to learn more about negative painting, I do have a mini course on that and that's from flat to fabulous. And that course will help you to break down a reference photo and pull out all the different details using one color, using monochrome specifically. Now, I've also pulled out some depth. So we are doing a lot of layering as well. You would see that I let the first layer dry and then after that, I went in with layers. And I always ask the question, do you want it to blend or do you want it to be defined so that's something that you have to ask yourself because that's going to be a mix of wet in wet or dry in wet and these are important questions to ask yourself as you are painting so I really hope that this has given you insight more detail into the way in which I actually painted and as you are going through your practice please share your work as well I look forward to seeing it now let me just move the camera and change it up so that you can see me, but this is again the messy middle. <laughs> so, now thank you so much for joining me today as we painted the poppies. It was such a delight to get to show you my start to finish process. I also really, really enjoyed troubleshooting with you as we were going through this very poppy. These are beautiful poppies that really give you a sense of the different techniques that you can mix and match when you're painting. It also shows you the deliberate and intentional steps to plan your painting because watercolor is not just using brush strokes only. We also are considering what the strategy, what the system is. And I will invite you to go through my videos during the five day challenge because each video is going to show you a system. And as you go through day one all the way to day five, you would see that there's a bit of repetition in that system. And that repetition would help you to not just grow your muscle, it's also going to help you to gain more confidence so that you know how to paint in a style that is unique to you. And it's also going to help you to grow your knowledge and foundation in watercolor. And that's going to help you to paint loosely. So thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you next time. We can connect on Instagram, on crafty.fox or at Brush Movement. Otherwise, feel free to drop down your comments in the section below. Now, I will be dishing out a new YouTube video every Monday because I believe that Monday is the day where everyone needs a kick, you know, um, whether it's a good kick or, a, or whichever. I feel like Mondays is a great day and I am still working on figuring out what exactly I would like to put in my channel. So let me know in the comments below if you've got any suggestions, questions and things that you feel would be so beneficial for you to stay tuned to in my channel. 
Now, I want to also have dialogues around different things when it comes to watercoloring and creating because my perspective is that it's not just about techniques. It's not just about understanding water control and all of that. Sometimes when we are talking about process, it's also about the internal process. And this is something I'm so passionate about because my background is actually in psychology before I've done this full time. And this gives me a way to tap into our inner world and our inner selves when we are painting, some of that inner dialogue that we have with ourselves as we are painting. And I think that it's important to bring all of those out because we don't see it on social media. We see perfect works of art and masterpieces. And I think that so much of the time we need to appreciate the journey, appreciate where exactly we are at so that you can better embrace where you are at instead of you know, comparing or instead of feeling discouraged that you are at a certain space and someone else is in a certain space. And I think that when you learn to embrace where you are at in your journey, appreciate it, let it take up space, you know, take your time with it. That's going to be when you really, really grow and you get to then sustain this creative space as a place that you can keep coming back to. And I really, really want that for you. So if you have not done so, please, please, please subscribe to this channel so that I can help you, serve you, and definitely connect with you. I can't wait for us to again see each other and hopefully I will be able to do an actual YouTube live at some point. We'll, we'll figure it out. And at this point in time, thank you for tuning in.